Welcome to another Ethical Corporation podcast with me, Toby Webb. Joining me in today's podcast is Stephen Wilding, one of the conference directors at Ethical Corporation. So welcome, Stephen. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Toby. Good. Now, this podcast is about a conference that we're holding, listeners, uh, on March 21st, 22nd uh, in London called How to Manage Social Environmental Risk for Oil, Gas and Mining. So, Stephen, uh, why are we holding this event? Well, um, during the research phase, obviously, spoke to uh, a number of organisations, NGOs, uh, corporate organisations, full spectrum, and uh, a few areas really have come up as quite important and strong reasons for holding this event. Uh, on the sort of uh, legislature and, and compliance side, one of the big things has been the revised IFC performance standards, which uh, went into, f- which came into force. January 1st, 2012. So these are the International Finance Corporation's social environmental standards for, for business that they lend money to? Yeah, basically. So they have a, quite a big impact on um, uh, corporate organisations, oil, gas, mining companies being able to secure project finance debt and uh, all these kind of things, and due diligence issues as well. So that's a big driver for, for interest in this. What else is driving interest in this area because I remember years ago I was used to joke with one of our investors that one day we'd hold a conference on ethics in oil gas and mining and he was used to say it's ridiculous you'll never you'll never be able to do that and here we are third year running Mm -hmm. um, with an event which seems to be growing in popularity apart from the IFC why Mm -hmm. is that happening Um, I think is there's a I've definitely noticed a, a growing trend in the area of social risk so if we look at the broad landscape, we've got issues going on such as uh, resource nationalism. And basically, there's a direct tie-in between managing social risk uh, properly, engaging with your stakeholders to uh, make sure that the countries that you're operating in understand the benefits of your mining operation and uh, making sure that you're investing sustainably in those communities and being and having the license to operate in those areas and produce profits over the long term. So, I mean, basically, to make it simple, poor social risk management means that you won't get to operate in these areas uh, which you need to to get the resources and, and minerals. I mean, I think um, in the research, just to pluck out a figure, there's a, a quote from Ruggie saying... The cost, potential cost of disruption of a mine can be anywhere between 20 to $30 million a week. So, I mean, that is, that's a, a very real business driver for having proper risk management in place. And uh, this conference will help deliver that with a lot of companies coming down and showing on a practical level uh, what they're doing to address these areas. And how significant... Do you think Ruggie's work is for these companies? And I ask because it, mm. it sounds very significant. Mm. It's, it's proper heavyweight um, you know, endorsement of a framework to manage business and human mm. rights. But last year we held this conference in, in Houston and I asked about 60 companies in Houston, mostly US oil and gas firms and, and mining companies, who'd heard of Ruggie and only three of them had, which I found quite extraordinary. Um, what's the level of interest you found from your research from the sort of more European, more sort of global mining oil and gas side? Um, I think the, from my research, what I found is that the global companies operating, especially in emerging markets and uh, developing economies, for them the human rights aspect is very, very critical, is very important. I can see your point that maybe if um, uh, a company is operating, say, more in the, in the North Sea or in the developed region, uh, then the human rights aspect is less of a concern. But for com- which most of these companies are, they're operating in areas with low infrastructure and regulatory capacity. The human rights aspect is critical, really, to uh, making sure that they can continue to operate in those areas in the long term and ultimately deliver the sustainable long-term profits that they need from their exploration and mining activities. Now, I notice you've got quite a wide range of speakers Mm. for this event. Just run us through a few of the names um, from the corporate side. Who's talking? Okay, so from the corporate side, we've got uh, Tom Burke, who's a senior environmental policy advisor at Rio Tinto. And um, he also advises the Foreign and Commonwealth Office 
on climate change. Um, we've also got from De Beers, or soon to be Anglo-American, I'm not sure quite what's going on there, but uh, we've got Tim Dabson, executive di- director, and he's going to address uh, stakeholder engagement. And we've also got a senior specialist from the IFC speaking, so um, Garcia Miller and um, Nicholas Flanders from the IFC, and um, from Anglo Gold Ashante to give the sort of African perspective. Uh, we've got Senior Vice President of Sustainability, Johan Vigilan. Now, if I'm an NGO or a campaigner looking at your organ- looking at the organisation of this conference, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, isn't this all just a bunch of corporate greenwash of, of big mining oil and gas companies stood up saying, yeah, everything's fine, we're on top of this, don't worry, mm-hmm. trying to reassure, reassure a few investors in the room, trying to make their peers you know, feel that they, they're up to speed? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I can, I can see that point, I can understand why you make it. But actually, if you look at the attendees and you look at the companies attend, uh, the organisations, I should say, that are attending, we definitely got enough in there to make sure that there's some robust discussion and there's not going to be any corporate greenwash. I mean, we've got Global Witness, who controversially, they've left the Kimberley process. I think they'll have a few tough questions to maybe ask the likes of the bidders. Who they, knows? they usually do. Yeah. <laughs> um, publish what you pay. Uh, the Extractives Industry Transparency Initiative um, and uh, well that's uh, that's three of the most significant organisations um, just to finish off then why don't you uh, just talk us through what do you hope that, that attendees from this conference will, will leave uh, with I mean, what, what are the practical outcomes that they, you think they might get well I think they, they were going to take with them take away with them real um, practical knowledge for risk management and mitigation. I mean, for instance, we've got a a capacity building session on the agenda where we're looking at at long-term capacity building. So not something like just building a school and then there's no teachers for that school, but proper long-term sustainable capacity building. And that's covering areas from um, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Liberia, the Canadian, even the Canadian Arctic. So they're going to take with them uh, real practical, tangible takeaways to have to deal with operations globally. So that's the, that, that's the aim. We do, it's not just, it's not a, a conference, it's all talk. We want them, they will come away with, with um, real steps that they can implement in their business plan to uh, tackle what are serious issues for the oil, gas and mining sector. I mean, as we've seen, several several countries are looking to take steps to increase a slice of the revenue. And stakeholder engagement, making sure you're engaging correctly with communities, these are all critical areas to, um, to make sure that you have those strong relationships and you can deliver sustainable profits. Okay. Stephen, thank you. Listeners, um, come along, judge for yourselves. Stephen and I will do another podcast after the event to, uh, to go over some of the key lessons. If you want to find out more about the conference, you can go to ethicalcorp.com, click on events. You'll see it uh, on the homepage. March 21st, 22nd, 2012 in London. And we'll hope to see you all there. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, Toby.